We have a great talk tonight from Jonathan Brown. He's a co-founder of Mix Blockchain, and he's going to be talking to us about uh, how his project's working on decentralized uh, media content um, and sort of trying to avoid uh, censorship. Uh, and that's obviously a very hot topic in the media nowadays. Some of you might have been paying attention uh, to some of the things happening in the, U in the US uh, related to people like Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson and the like. Um, and so I'm quite interested to hear what he's going to have to say. Um, and so, yeah, let's hear from him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Brown. Thanks. Uh, how, how is everybody? Um, so I, I've been working on this project for uh, more, more than three years, actually. Um, so uh, it was actually the, the summer when, when Ethereum actually launched, when it switched on. I really wanted to work out how to build uh, a decentralized Reddit, decentralized Twitter, just decentralized social media. Um, it, it really irritated me that if you wanted to publish something online, it had to go via uh, a company that, that ran their servers. You had to publish via Twitter or via YouTube or via Instagram. And that just didn't make sense to me. I thought that you should just be able to to publish, and then no one should be able to, to get in your way. So I've, uh, I've been building this project called, called Mix, so I'm going to uh, run, run through how, how it works, and then afterwards I'm going to do a, a short demo, and then there'll be an opportunity for some, some question and answers. OK, so if we, uh, we think back to uh, how, how the web got started. Um, so a lot of people don't know, actually, the, the World Wide Web, originally, there weren't any spaces in, in the term World Wide Web. So this was the, the name of the first web browser was actually called World Wide Web. Uh, so that was created by Tim Berners-Lee. Um, and this actually had combined, uh, you had the ability to browse content and to, and to publish content. Um, I can quickly show you a, a screenshot this is the, the first uh, version of the web. Um, looks uh, pretty easy to use. Um, and of course, uh, the web was, was decentralized because anybody could switch on a server and publish anything they want on the server. And then anybody could run a web browser and look at whatever content, to, whatever content they wanted. Um, so in, in that sense, it, the, the, web, the web is decentralized. Um, obviously, HTTP is the, the, the main protocol, um, but this, uh, this can actually be quite efficient because uh, if you're delivering a lot of content, you really want to use a, a CDN, a content delivery network. And uh, that's, that's a huge business that, uh, and, uh, that, that adds a, a central point of failure. Um, so we, we need better technologies where we, we don't need to have these, these industries to help with, with scalability. Okay, so then uh, Facebook came along and various other platforms and of course everybody loved that because it's, uh, there's so many advantages to having a centralized platform. Uh, you don't have to set up your website, you don't have to set up WordPress. You can connect with, with all your friends. Um, everybody can, can publish, and you've got lots of nice features, like you can have voting and, and moderation. So of course, ev everybody loves using these, these centralized platforms. Um, and another advantage of these platforms is that they're typically, they, they are uh, data first, which is actually a great advantage. Um, so if you think about something like Google Maps, it's actually, it's, it's publishing the, the, the data directly, whereas it, on a web page, although it's a decentralized technology, it's, it's publishing a web page, and then you have to extract the information from the web page with, with additional technologies. Um, so this actually, it makes it, it, makes it much harder to, to, to use the data, because the data is kind of trapped in, in, in the web page on, on, the, on the traditional web. Uh, so, you know, this was great, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success using centralized platforms, but then, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it had some problems. Uh, and whenever, whenever I started working on, uh, on, on Mix, um, 
you know, the, okay, there was steam it, but generally, you know, people would ask me like, why, why are you doing this? You know, I just, I just kind of wanted to build it because I, I felt it's, it's the way it should be. You should just be able to publish without an, an intermediary. But in, you know, in the three years since I started, it's actually, it's become a real problem. So uh, as, you, as you may be aware, so YouTube has been demonetizing some, uh, some very large. Cheers. Okay, with, uh, with, with YouTube, so they started with demonetization of uh, some fairly large channels with uh, hundreds of thousands of, of subscribers. Uh, and, then, and then even started deleting uh, some, some major accounts. And okay, you, you may or may not agree with uh, what they deleted just based on your own political viewpoint, but this, uh, this, this, this sounds kind of dangerous. So why, why does this company have the authority to decide what, what people can and cannot talk about? And of, of course, recently we, we've had Patreon in the news with uh, um, various people either uh, being banned or people uh, withdrawing from the platform in, in solidarity. Uh, but with, with this case, with uh, Sargon of Akkad, um, he actually uh, he, he said something in an old, uh, an, an, an old video cast, and Patreon didn't like what he said. Uh, even though it wasn't on their platform, and, and he, he got banned for that. Um, on Twitter, they actually, uh, they, they quite often, uh, they will ban people, but then they, they won't realize that they've been banned. So the, the publisher thinks that they're, they're publishing and everybody can hear it, but then in reality, people aren't getting the message. Um, so this, this is why we need a, a platform that, that, that people can trust. Um, there was a, a funny story with uh, the Reddit CEO. So he actually he he went into the database and uh, changed one of the comments, <laughs> and then he had to apologize for that. Uh, so of course uh, th that that sort of thing just shouldn't be able to happen. No one should have that that kind of power. Um, and then recently, uh, Slack is actually uh, they've banned people from Iran from using their platform. Uh, because of some some U.S. sanctions or something like that, maybe uh, maybe legally they have to comply with that. But this uh, it it shouldn't be possible. The technology should be for for everybody. And then I've got a couple of older examples. So there there was some articles written about the the R technology subreddit. So it actually they had a, a built-in system where if you used any of the words anonymous Bitcoin, Comcast, neutrality, NSA, or Snowden. Uh, your post would just it would it would not arrive on, on the website. It was not uh, it was not permitted. Uh, so that that's kind of ridiculous. You know, I think uh, I think these are important things we all need to talk about. Um, and then even on, uh, on I think it, I think it was actually R India. Um, they were silently censoring anything that wasn't of a, a left wing bias. So anyone who was looking at at the at the India subreddit, they would think, oh, everyone is, is very left-wing. But actually, it's just that the moderators wanted it to, to be that way. Um, so I, I think we need uh, people from all political persuasions to, uh, to have dialogue and, and not just uh, cut out half the conversation. <laughs> and so we've, we've had a few uh, other projects have kind of popped up. Um, you know, some of them are more decentralized than others, they all work in a totally different way, but uh, it just goes to show that with all this real, uh, people are feeling real pain in the world due to this censorship, and that's why there's uh, so, so many of these platforms have, have been appearing. Okay, so, so what is Mix? So the idea is there, there's, abs there's, there's no intermediary whatsoever, so you can always publish. No one can stop you. Uh, so it's, it's neutral. There's no political bias. Uh, that's that's kind of the, the, most, the most important thing. 
Um, but of course, if you build a decentralized technology, there's a lot of potential problems. But uh, it can actually be instantaneous. If you want to, that means if you if you, if you click post, uh, people can see your post immediately. So you don't have to wait for the transaction to be mined or anything like that. Um, if you want to build on the platform, so you can. Either if you want to write a smart contract that builds on the existing uh, smart contracts that run the platform, you can do that, or you can uh, you can build on the platform in a in a less decentralized way. So you can actually build a a centralized service on top of the decentralized platform, which can give you uh, a lot more power. You can have a lot of a lot more rich functionality, but then of course uh, there's the risk for uh, for for censorship. Um, and something that's really important is that we need the, the flexibility for, uh, for what content we see. So one of the problems with these platforms is that they generally only work in a certain way. So you know, Twitter, it's typically you, you see the, the feed in, in chronological order. And then actually at the moment you have the option so they can show you your, your created uh, feed at the top. With Reddit, it's more based upon uh, different different topics and people voting on content within topics. But uh, wouldn't it be great if you could just you could publish whatever you want, and then the person consuming the content they could choose what kind of system they they use to decide what what actually appears in front of them. There, I think there's massive scope for developer creativity to come up with new systems to decide what actually gets what what actually gets displayed. And the, the current APIs that these centralized platforms give you, you know, it's, it's great. They, they give an API so developers can innovate, but typically uh, you're not a first-class developer. The, the company running the platform is the first-class developer, and uh, developers just accessing the API to the platform, they're definitely second-class citizens on, on the platform. Um, uh, Mix has an anti-spam mechanism. I can talk about that later. Um, and it's yeah, it's totally extensible. So you can you can do whatever you want on the on the platform, um, and it's 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 really on-chain forum software. You you can think of it like like WordPress written in smart contracts. That's kind of the that's the the best way to explain it to to developers. So it's it's Twitter, it's Reddit, it's Medium, it's Instagram, it's it's YouTube, it's it's whatever you want it to be. So when, when I started the project, I was looking into Ethereum, and I wrote, uh, I wrote some smart contracts and thought, well, can I implement this on, on Ethereum? And uh, that's, you know, Ethereum is, is great technology, although ultimately I decided to, uh, to, to make a fork of, of Ethereum. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come to that a little bit later on. But uh, it's, it's a separate Ethereum blockchain. Um, you've got the, the smart contract functionality. Um, it's unlike Steemit and EOS that are uh, uh, perhaps have less security with, uh, with, with uh, DPoS. Uh, Ethereum is a, a full proof of work bit, uh, uh, block, blockchain. Uh, so you, you do get stronger security, although perhaps uh, less transaction throughput. Um, it's, it's disinflationary. So that means that there is a, a static mining reward. There isn't any uh, halvenings or third innings happening. Um, uh, Ethereum has great light client functionality. So that's, uh, that's really important for actually having, having it run on a, a mobile device. Um, great community support. Ethereum has a very rich uh, ecosystem of developers and tools. So that's, that's really important. Uh, many different third party integrations. And for, for Mix, you can actually you can use Parity or a customized version of Geth to run your, your full node software. So um, unlike a lot of clones of Ethereum, you can actually you, you can use both, both implementations. Um, so this is kind of the, uh, the slightly, controversial, slightly controversial part. So why, uh, why is Mix implemented on a, a separate Ethereum blockchain? Um, and this actually, uh, it was after the, the, the DAO bug and the, the hard fork to Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, I actually decided I wanted Mix to be on an independent blockchain for, for various reasons. So first of all, if, 
if this was deployed on Ethereum or Ethereum Classic, and there was a problem in one of my smart contracts, and I wanted to have a hard fork to fix the problem, that, that wouldn't actually be possible. But because this is uh, an independent Ethereum blockchain, so it's, it's a blockchain for, for this specific community, so that means that if, have another drink? How's your beer levels? Do you need another beer? I'm good. Okay. I don't know where that voice is coming from. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so the, the mixed blockchain has the ability to hard fork in isolation from uh, the, the, the main Ethereum blockchain. So if, if there is a problem, if the, if the mixed community comes together and says, we need, we need to have a hard fork to fix this problem, then we can, we can get consensus to do that. Um, another big advantage is uh, that we get massive scalability, especially to begin with because the, the, the entire capacity of Ethereum is available for the mixed blockchain. So at the moment, uh, a transaction on, on mixed blockchain, it costs like a, a billionth of a penny. It's really cheap. And if, if and when this, this project becomes a, a great success, then we will have to, uh, to do things to improve scalability. But in the meantime, we've got massive capacity. And then because it's an independent blockchain, we can actually uh, hard fork the blockchain to increase scalability so we can uh, we can hard fork the the core functionality that we use on the blockchain so instead of having general purpose smart contracts we can have hard coded hard coded smart contracts that that do what we need to do um, so then of course it has a, a native token called mix and then uh, this was used for the the crowdfund which I'll, I'll come to later um, so if, if I was building this today from scratch, I would probably start on Polkadot, which is kind of a, a next generation Ethereum. So you can think of my approach, I, I'm treating Ethereum like it is Polkadot. So uh, with Polkadot, every blockchain is, uh, every project is, is a separate blockchain. And so that's, that's what I did with, with Ethereum. So the, the other major technology component is called IPFS. So the, the actual files, any, every comment, every image, every video that's stored on IPFS. So that's just a decentralized file system, uh, kind of like BitTorrent. And when you store a file on IPFS, then you get a, you get a hash. So that's a permanent identifier for the file. So the, the basic idea is that these hashes get written into the blockchain. So when you publish an item, you're putting the, the IPFS hash into the And then if you want to, let's say you want to edit your blog post, then you're able to make a, a second revision. You can put another IPFS hash in, into the blockchain. Um, so this is, uh, this is great technology. And it actually, it works like a free CDN because uh, IPFS is very good at finding who, you know, which, uh, which computer near you on the internet actually has the file you're looking for. So um, it's not always talking to a, a central point. So the, the, main, the main smart contract for Mix is called Item Store. And as I explained, so you put these IPFS hashes directly into the blockchain uh, each, each revision is another IPFS hash. It's a, it's a pluggable system, so you can actually, you can deploy another item store smart contract that uses an entirely different backend. It's, it's written in Solidity. Uh, it's actually, even though the, the core uh, smart contract, it's only a few hundred lines long, but it's actually, it's been evolving for three and a half years, so you can, you can see that on, on GitHub. Uh, every item has an owner, uh, so only the owner can, can update the, uh, the content, for example. And then you've got some settings, so content can be configured to be updatable, or you can enforce revisions, it can be retractable, or uh, you can transfer content from one user to another. And every, every item has a 32-byte 30 identifier. So even, even if you make a new revision, you, you put a new IPFS hash into the blockchain, the, uh, the item ID stays the same. 
And then I've written various other smart contracts that add other functionalities such as feeds. So that's kind of like RSS, uh, comment hierarchies, mentions, things like that. There's various other smart contracts for, uh, for various functionality that, that people need. So the, the content that is actually uh, stored on IPFS, so there's a, a whole system for, for how that should be, uh, should be encoded. Um, so I chose the, the Google protocol buffers serialization technology. Uh, there's actually, there are hundred, hundreds, if not thousands, of different serialization technologies. So I had to uh, analyze all of them and uh, uh, use various metrics to decide like which which serialization technology was uh, was best for this project and uh, I'm very happy with Google protocol buffers it's got uh, excellent language support and uh, it, it actually creates very very small uh, blobs of data um, so when you store an item of content on on mix so you can actually you have this you have this concept called mix in so you can uh, you can put all kinds of different content together in, in each piece of content. So you could have, uh, uh, you could have a, a, a title, so that could be like the, the title of your blog post, you could have the body, you could have an image, you could have GPS coordinates. Um, you can just, uh, you can put any content you want into each, into each item and then that can be, be processed by, by any software. Um, and then it uses the, the Bratley compression algorithm, so that's uh, uh, very effective for compressing very small pieces of text. So even if you're just posting like one sentence in a comment, uh, it will still, uh, it'll still reduce the, the size of, of, of that comment. Okay, so for the, the image handling, so it, uh, it doesn't use JPEG natively, it uses WebP, which is uh, Google's kind of uh, alternative to, to JPEG. So this is an open source uh, uh, image file format. Um, but the, the big problem with any kind of decentralized system is uh, where, where does the image scaling occur? So normally if you upload a, a file, you know, if you upload an image, it might be 20 megabytes, you upload it to Facebook or to WordPress, uh, that, that large image, it gets shrunk down and then the, the image that's actually delivered to people's web browsers or apps is actually considerably smaller. So on the back end, this, this image scaling occurs. But on a decentralized system, there, there is no back end. So uh, where, where does the image scaling occur? So the, the solution is to use a technology called, called MIT mapping. So the idea is you, you keep reducing the, uh, the size of the image. So you have the, the full size image and then you reduce the width and the height by 50%. You have a smaller image, you keep doing this until you, you end up with a very small image. So whenever uh, an app or any client software needs to, to get a, a version of the image, they can choose the, the most appropriate resolution that they need. So if, uh, if you're a 20 megabyte image, it just needs to be a tiny little thumbnail, then the app can just get the thumbnail instead of getting the, the 20 megabyte image. Okay, so one, one of the most uh, challenging problems with uh, decentralized publication is uh, people are gonna publish some, some really nasty content. Um, and of course, on the, on the World Wide Web, you, know, you, you have the choice. So you, you get to decide what you publish on your web server, and you get to decide what you look at in, in your web browser. So it, uh, you know, it, it comes down to your individual responsibility, and then of course, uh, you are morally and legally responsible for, for what you do, um, as always. Uh, but then when, when we move to these centralized platforms like Facebook, so of course they have uh, uh, a whole army of people who will look at all the content, anything that gets flagged, and then they will delete anything which uh, uh, should not be viewed by, by the users. But on a, on a decentralized system, this doesn't exist. So then you have a real problem, like what if, what if someone publishes something terrible on the platform, and then it's just on the platform, there's no... Uh, there's, there's no means to, to, to delete it. 
So I'm, I, I took the idea that it should be like the original version of the web where you have this, this individual responsibility. But if, if you're subscribed to someone's feed, you know, maybe they will publish something that you don't want to, to reach your device. So the, the solution I came up with is actually that you can publicly declare uh, a list of other users on the platform that, that you actually trust. So you trust that they're not going to put anything, anything illegal onto your device. So every, every item that you're going to see in an application, whether that's an image or a comment, uh, it either has to be directly published by someone that you trust or someone that you trust has to trust that person. So you can have that one or two degrees of separation. Uh, you know, so maybe you have uh, you know, a few hundred friends and then of course all of your friends have friends. There will be a lot of overlap, but that's already uh, you know, several tens of thousands of people. Um, so that's, uh, like, that's a good starting point for uh, who you want to receive content from, and then you can add and remove people and block people as necessary to, to curate who, who you're receiving content from. And uh, another important question is how, how do we pay the, the content creators? So, of course, Steemit has been uh, pretty successful with this. Um, especially for uh, the really successful people on Steemit, they've actually been able to make a lot of money. Um, but I, I wanted to come up with a, a different model. Um, I, I didn't want to have any advertising. I didn't want to uh, have any paywalls. I didn't want to be inflating the currency supply to pay content creators. Um, so I actually I came up with this idea that every content creator or every, every project can actually have their own token. And the idea is that the, the content creator gets paid every day the same amount in their own token. And then, of course, uh, why, why would this token have value? Where, well, actually, it, it can be gamified. So if you're a fan, then maybe you want to buy the token, and then you want to you wanna display this token on your profile. So as, you know, if you want to be a, a public fan, maybe you, you really want everybody to know that you're a fan, and they want to know that you're the biggest fan, then it actually it gets competitive. So you want, to, you want to show that you have more tokens than somebody else. Uh, so this, is, uh, this incentivizes the fans to actually to, to buy the token. Um, and I, I, haven't, I haven't built this yet, I haven't tested it, but I think this has a lot of potential for actually generating revenue streams uh, for, for content creators. Um, and then another thing you can do with this, you can take the, and of course th these tokens can be traded on the, on the open market, so every, every token has uh, a market value. So if, if you just multiply the market value of the token by how much the content creator is getting paid every day, then you know, uh, you know the, the real value of how much money the, uh, the content creator is getting paid. And this is actually what's called a, a Sybil resistant uh, measure of popularity. Um, a major problem with uh, social networks uh, is, you know, you, okay, you have all these followers, you have all these likes, but you don't know how many of them are fake. Uh, it's kind of very, very unreliable measure of, of popularity. And then on a decentralized system, this problem is exacerbated even more because uh, there's no means for an authority to come in and say, well, these look fake, let's delete them. So uh, this, I think this is actually, this can be a good uh, civil resistant measure of, of popularity. Uh, so this is how the, the mixed crowdfund works. So the, uh, the green line is, the, is what the miners get paid, so they always get paid the same amount. Uh, unlike Ethereum, where they, they reduce the, the reward uh, to try to maximize the value of the token and to uh, uh, reduce the inflation, ri inflation rate in, in preparation for, for proof of stake, um, I'm just keeping the, the block reward static. Uh, but then the blue line is, is, is what I get paid. So I'm incentivized to, to build the platform. Uh, I'm incentivized to take the mix that I started with, try to make it worth more value so that I can sell it, so that I can pay people in mix, 
So the mix that I get later on is worth more. And uh, the reason for this is that if, if I did an ICO and I, I hyped up the project in the beginning, uh, and if, you know, if that was successful, then I would probably have made a vast quantity of money at the beginning of the project, and then there's no incentive to actually uh, to build, to, to, to build the platform. Uh, the, the, whole, you know, the whole idea of blockchain, of blockchain technology is to financially incentivize your desired outcome. So although I want to build this platform anyway, I'm also I'm in, I'm financially incentivized to build the platform, and I have the, this gives me the financial means to do so. So I've been able to pay uh, a great many people to uh, assist me in in this endeavor. So the the main thing I'm working on at the moment is the the desktop browser. So this is called Acuity. Uh, this is the logo. So it, it kind of looks like uh, the, the RSS logo, except there's, there's two of them. Uh, so it's kind of like two, uh, two waves are meeting, and then there's going to be some, some interference. Uh, so the, the Acuity browser, so this is a desktop browser. It's based on Electron and Vue and, and Bulma. And it comes bundled with with parity for the, the full node software and the IPFS software. And to begin with, this will be a, a full node uh, client. So it uses the, uh, the parity warp sync. So it can, uh, it can get the full blockchain state in, uh, in about 30 seconds. And then it will uh, verify that in the background. Uh, but later on, we will have to move to uh, a light client solution uh, once uh, uh, once it gets too much, too much data for everybody to, to download. So this will be available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. It's the reference implementation. So if anybody wants to build something else on the Mix platform, they can look at Acuity and actually uh, uh, work out how to, uh, how to integrate on the platform. And this, this app that I'm building is totally decentralized. So of course, a lot of people might want to to build another app that is uh, less decentralized but has more functionality or you know has richer feature set. So I'm I'm trying to do as much as possible while keeping it totally decentralized, and then I'm sure other people will uh, create some less decentralized uh, solutions. Um, so we, we got some integrations, so you can store Mix on the Konami wallet, you can, uh, you can store it on my Ether wallet or my crypto or the Ledger, and you can trade it on Stex or GraviX. Uh, so looking forward, so on, on the Stex exchange, we, they just added in the past few days the, the Mix ETH uh, pair. So. Uh, we'll be getting it on uh, Mix BTC pretty soon. There's uh, Treaser support is coming. I need to release the browser, and uh, there's another another browser is being developed by another community member called Double Plus. So this is actually uh, a web app. So we need to make sure that these two browsers are totally compatible. So you can publish in one uh, one browser, and then you'll see it in the other. I need to implement the creator tokens. I need to add video support, which I actually have a lot of experience with because I, uh, I was in the, the Drupal community for 10 years and I did a lot of uh, video work on, on the Drupal platform. And then we need to think about decentralized search, which is a hard problem and not a lot of people talk about decentralized search, but that's very important. Uh, I want to get the, the token on some decentralized exchanges. We'll need to improve scalability and uh, because this, uh, you know, this is not the Ethereum. Let's have another beer. So even even Ethereum Classic had a a fifty one percent attack recently. Uh, and the, the hash rate on Mix is significantly lower. So I, I came up with a, a three-level plan for how I can mitigate this risk on, uh, on the Mix blockchain. So I've implemented the first, uh, the first layer of protection, but there are 
many, many more things that can be done. And every, uh, every uh, low hash rate blockchain is innovating in different ways in this field. So uh, there's certainly a lot of improvements that can be made. OK, so I'm going to show you uh, a demo of the, the Acuity browser. Actually, I'll show you the website very quickly. OK, so this is the website. We have some videos. We, you can join Discord. You can read the blog. Uh, this is kind of the overall diagram. So it just shows how the, uh, how the blockchain smart contracts connect with IPFS and how that's, that's encoded. We've got our integrations. So there's actually uh, there's four, four mining pools. And uh, this is the link to the, the Double Plus browser. We've got two block explorers. You can see the, uh, uh, the, the network status. Here's the crowdfund. So it shows how much mix has already been released and how much is, is remaining. So this is actually uh, the blockchain's been active for 649 days. So uh, the crowdfund lasts for 2,000 days in total. And these are the, the various people that have been working on the project. So there's myself, obviously. Uh, we have a designer. Uh, Brian is, well, he's actually not a back-end developer now. He's working on the, the Double Plus browser. Need to fix that. Um, got some web developers that made the, um, some of the, the block explorers. Um, some graphic designers. Um, and then there's many more people in, uh, in, in Discord that are actually, uh, um, they, they really want me to release the, the Acuity browser just so they can start innovating on the platform. And last year, uh, Mix was gold sponsor of Anarchipulco in Mexico. Um, I'm going there again this year, although I'm not, uh, I'm not a sponsor this year. Okay. Okay, so I'll show you uh, a demo of, uh, of the browser. I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna try to record my desktop. If it takes up too much power, I can, uh, I can switch it off. Um, so the, the browser, it comes bundled with the, the full node software and IPFS. So at the moment, I'm just running the, uh, the full node in this tab and IPFS in this tab and then in this tab I, I run the browser so I will I will bring it up for you um, so this uh, this is the the current status of the the acuity browser it's another airplane Okay, so uh, we can see we're connected to the, the local node on, on my laptop. And we can have a look at, at the accounts. Um, so there's, there's various accounts that are currently uh, on my laptop. Some of them I've, I've named, some of them I haven't. Um, but you can see if I change the active account, it will actually change the, the profile picture. Now, I'm just going to unlock one of these accounts. I hope uh, I need to improve the colors here, actually. Um, I hope I can remember the password. OK, so I've unlocked the uh, Jonathan account. Um, you can see my, my balance. Um, we have a, a wallet, so I can actually I hope this works. I can try to send some, some mix into the wallet. So I've got the, the Coinami wallet on my phone. So if I scan in the, the QR code, 
Um, hopefully this will work. Yep, there you go. Um, so pending, and uh, you can send as well. So just some basic uh, wallet support. OK, so if I go to my profile, um, let's try to edit the profile. Um, I could put in my full name. Change the type of profile. We're in Chiang Mai. And I'll try to choose a different image. Um, I go for this one. OK, uh, hopefully this works. I haven't tested it in a while. There you go. OK, so I've updated my, my profile. Um, it should update up here, but maybe if I just go back there, it'll update. Okay, so everybody can create a, a profile on, on the system. Okay, we can look at browsing history. Um, let's, uh, let's find a good example. Okay, so let's say I want to reply. I can say this is a nice owl. And then, well, it actually it says 49 years ago. That's because the timestamp is zero because uh, it hasn't been mined yet. So what it should say is uh, just now. But you'll see whenever this transaction gets mined, then this will update before your eyes and tell you uh, the time that it actually occurred. Um, so you can have this whole uh, comment hierarchy, and the whole hierarchy is is on chain. Um, so no, no one, no one can prevent you from actually. Uh, no one can prevent you from adding a comment to anything. Actually, uh, I even I have some emoji reactions functionality I can show you. So uh, maybe if I click here, so we have some emojis. Uh, you know, I can just uh, add some emojis like that. Uh, so. Anyone can, uh, can have an emoji reaction or multiple emoji reactions to any, any piece of content. Uh, but you only see uh, reactions from people in, in your trust network. Um, and every, every, everything you do is actually an on-chain transaction. So if I go back here, you can see just from uh, putting in those reactions, it's always it's an on-chain transaction. Okay, I can show you the, uh, the trusted account system. So you know on, uh, on Twitter, sometimes you get the little, uh, little verified badge. And you know, it just means that Twitter is saying, this is someone you can trust, we know, we know who it is. Well, with, uh, with Acuity, you actually, you get to, for everyone, you get to decide if, if they're trusted or not. So this, this content was by test account two. Uh, now, it doesn't have the tick in it, so I don't actually trust test account two, but I can still see the content. And that's because uh, I trust test account, and test account trusts test account two. If I click here, then now I trust test account two, so I don't need this intermediary person. So I can remove test account from my trusted accounts, and I can still see this. But if I now, if I untrust test account two, and then it's gone, because I don't trust it directly, and no one that I trust, trust test account two either. Um, so that's just an easy way to uh, uh, control kind of who, who can put content on your device, because that's, that's very important. Um, I can, yeah, I already showed you publishing an image in the profile. Um, we have this uh, browsing history. This is not on the blockchain. This is just stored locally. 
Um, we also have feeds. So you can decide if you're going to um, subscribe or unsubscribe from a feed. So if I subscribe to the feed, and then when I go to my home, then it should be, OK, I think it didn't work. OK, well, you can, uh, you can subscribe and unsubscribe, and then you can, uh, you can post content to feeds. So if I want to go to uh, publish image, I want to put it in the blockchain feed. I just call it test image. OK, so I, I create the content. And if I go to blockchain feed, then all being well, it should be in the feed. OK. Ah, so yeah, it will be on, on the home page because uh, on my home page it displays all the content from all the feeds that I'm subscribed to. Okay, let's try the editing functionality. So I can, well, this is kind of a, a small screen. Okay, let's try to add a description. Okay, so you can, uh, you can create as many revisions to the content as you want. Uh, this also has some, some markdown support. So if I can remember some markdown, I can actually uh, put it in italic, things like that. Uh, this is actually the biggest cave in the world. In Vietnam. And then it's, it's, it's updated. Uh, so I think that's, uh, that's pretty much where I've got to at the moment. Um, I wonder if this will work. Uh, yeah, you can see your transaction history. Um, so the way it works is uh, you're actually you're looking at the state of the pending block. So even before someone's transaction gets mined, uh, you still get to see the, the live effect that it has uh, on, uh, on, on the system. Okay, so I, th I think that's just about everything I can show you in the, in the app. So uh, maybe we can move to some, uh, some question and answers. Great. Please wait for the microphone. All right, question over here. Uh, well, thanks for that. Uh, it's very interesting. I uh, yeah, I really like see how how we much ne we need something like this. So uh, I'm very happy to to see that you work on it. And um, the first question, what I maybe maybe I wasn't paying attention right, but w what is the utility value of the mixed token if you are mining this? To whom are you selling it, and what are they gonna do with it? So if I, uh, if I go to the transaction history page, you can see that these are all on-chain transactions. And then this is actually the, the gas cost uh, for, for each transaction. So because this is a, a clone of the Ethereum blockchain, so the, the MIX token, it's actually it's exactly the same as the ETH token is on the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, because you can always publish because you're not relying on any intermediary uh, to publish on your behalf. It means you have to pay. If, if you're not paying, someone can censor you. So you, uh, you pay your transaction fee every time. It costs like a billionth of a penny if you want to, to publish something. At the, at the moment, it just costs a billionth of a penny. Um, so it's, it's really, it has the same role as it does in Ethereum. It's the, the base uh, coin for paying for transactions on, on the blockchain.
Yeah, and I have one follow-up question. And uh, it's just, you probably have an opinion about this, uh, about, and that's what I'm curious about. Like, you, you recognize that you can still hard fork this, so what if WikiLeaks publishes their next, like say, Trump papers on your platform, and then the State Department or the Pentagon goes, calls you and says, well, Jonathan, can you please do a hard fork? Will you do it? So even, uh, even if I did uh, do a controversial hard fork on the blockchain, uh, other people would still keep the, uh, the original blockchain running. So actually nothing's been deleted. It still exists. So, uh, you know, even if, I, even if I wanted to convince the community to hard fork, to censor, uh, like people would just ignore me and you just have two blockchains instead of one. Well, you talked about like the content being deleted, but I thought all the content's just being hosted on IPFS. So all the token in the blockchain is just a view to the content hosted on IPFS. Yeah, so uh, one, one thing I didn't mention is that uh, as soon as you publish something, everyone in your trusted network, everyone who trusts you, who was online, uh, as soon as you publish something, they will pin your IPFS content. What that means is uh, they will try to bring it onto their device. So that's kind of how the, uh, how the content propagates as soon as, as, soon as you, you press publish. Um, and of course, uh, you know, there is a discussion to be had of, uh, you know, how do we ensure that content stays live? What if, uh, what if people stop caring about some content on IPFS that might be forgotten about? Um, so uh, ultimately, someone will probably make sure everything is archived, but there is a risk that some, some content on IPFS, if nobody cares about it, it might, it might disappear. Um, but yeah, even uh, so, even if I did hard fork the blockchain, even if everybody went along with me, uh, it would still be on IPFS somewhere anyway. So there's kind of mul multiple levels of, of censorship resistance. I, I think it's possible that you're right that people would make sure that they the content stays out there. Uh, I just watched a video of a guy who's responsible for one third of the content on Wikipedia. And it's, he's just some random nerd that just wants to do it and keep it rolling and uh, for better or worse. I, I, there's people out there that I think will take it seriously. Yeah, and already with the, the internet archive, you know, they're already archiving everything that's, that's on the web anyway. Um, I like the trusted accounts uh, model. I was wondering if someone starts out posting good content and gets followed by a lot of people and then their account gets hacked or they start posting bad stuff, is there any way to spread that decision of people noticing that they're posting bad stuff and unfollowing through the network or everyone that's ever followed them has to manually click the box? Uh, I mean, th there's certainly scope for having some kind of uh, alert system like uh, this person's been hacked, or this person went crazy, this person got compromised, uh, and then, uh, yeah, it would be good just to have a system where everyone can be like, well, everyone's flagging this person, I just want to check that and uh, either untrust them or, or even, uh, you can actually, you'll be able to block people, and that's not something on the blockchain, so even if someone you trust, trusts that person, you, you'll still be able to override it locally and yeah. just block them on your device. So say someone I trust, trust that person, and that person that I trust just goes offline and doesn't monitor content. I'm gonna get shown that content unless everyone is constantly monitoring, right? Yeah, so um, if, well, if, if you stop trusting your friend, yeah. then you should stop trusting them, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, the, the meaning of trust, it, uh, you know, it can mean a million different things. But then, from a UI perspective, that gets really complicated. Yeah, uh, what, what I'm saying is it's quite an active decision to yeah. unlist someone. Yeah. So if someone's not active in the network, they just sign up, they trust a bunch of people, and I trust them, then I'm always going to see the content that they trust, even if they're not actively pruning their list of trusts. So it seems like this list of trusts is just going to grow and be very hard to pair back. I mean, ultimately, you're responsible. So even if uh, you know you don't want to offend your friend, 
because they've, uh, they've gone offline and people they trust have started uh, posting this material, you know, ultimately you're responsible. So m maybe you should untrust them and then tell them, well, if you, if you go back online and then fix your, your list, then maybe I'll trust you again. <laughs> got to untrust all of your other friends that have trusted that other person as well. It might be 10 people. Well, there's, there's, only, uh, like there's only two degrees of separation. Um, okay. You know. All this talk about degrees of separation, and honestly, Noah, you kind of look like Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yep. How are you doing? Uh, you mentioned before that uh, content creators uh, are going to be paid fixed amount of tokens daily. Uh, how would that work? Uh, because uh, naturally, content creators uh, do create different quality content. They create it on a daily basis, weekly basis. Uh, how would that work? So uh, let's, let's say that the, there's a smart contract that will pay a content creator like 1,000 tokens per day. But to begin with, these tokens will have no value whatsoever. But if, uh, if this token is connected with a brand, and then based on how many people actually value this brand, how many people want to show the world that they are a fan of this brand, uh, this is why it would have value. And so um, it's essentially, it, it becomes a popularity contest. If, uh, you know, if, if you're uh, like a Hollywood movie star, then a vast number of people might want to have uh, you know your token on on, on their profile, uh, and that could get very competitive. Uh, whereas if you're just like a B lister, then uh, you know your token's going to be worth less because less people care about showing that they're a fan of you. So it's kind of like a it's a free market solution for kind of uh, deciding who should get paid what. Okay, just, uh, so I would like to continue with one, two more questions. Okay, so uh, I would like to understand where the demand would be coming from, because naturally to encourage uh, content uh, creators to really create, a, uh, create a quality content, as you probably see on Steemit, uh, it's a constant struggle. And uh, so I can see uh, selling pressure coming from the miners, coming from you, coming from the content creators. Uh, what... Uh, how would I benefit if I would purchase and I would hold uh, your tokens? As, like on Steemit, for instance, if I'm a Steam holder, I can, uh, it can help me uh, build my influence. Uh, so it does encourage me to invest uh, potentially in, uh, in Steam and hold, mm -hmm. uh, which balance uh, the selling pressure. So now, uh, why would I, as a business owner or blogger, ever purchase your token? Would, would it help me get more influence? Would it help me grow bigger? Uh, so uh, f first of all, the, uh, the creator tokens, so they, they don't get mined. So uh, there's no kind of minor pressure to, to sell. Um, so the, the model I'm thinking of is, is not necessarily for businesses. It's more for, uh, for, for individuals who want to purchase the token because they uh, you know, an individual would care about uh, showing the world that uh, you know they're they're the biggest fan of a certain content creator. Um, but yeah, the the question of would a would a business want to uh, buy tokens of a content creator to show that they're supporting a certain content creator? Uh, maybe, but uh, that's kind of uh, it, it's a very complicated thing to consider because there's. You know, anything could happen. Um, and then, in terms of like adding additional features to tokens, so it, it can uh, provide other benefits. Again, there's there's endless scope for creativity. So if the if each token is is something like an ERC twenty token, then every content creator can actually innovate and come up with a different token that m maybe is not so simple as what I described. It could do many other things. So I think there's a uh, vast, vast scope for, for creativity for actually content creators making tokens that are incentivized in, in different ways. All right, thank you. Just, uh, sorry guys, just uh, bear with me. Last question, uh, slightly different topic, uh, also related to censorship. So uh, as we already know, uh, everything that is on blockchain is uh, there forever to stay 
forever. Uh, nothing can be done with it, it cannot be removed, erased. Uh, but uh, to access those informations, uh, you're gonna use some sort of front end, your site or whatever application. And that's where censorship can be forced upon you. So how are you gonna solve this problem? Like uh, all those informations will be accessible on, I don't know, wix.com, whatever. And let's say that the uh, US authority would ask you to uh, put some filters. They understand that the uh, data are on the blockchain, but they say whatever people cannot access, they will not access. We want to uh, interfere with your uh, front end. Mm -hmm. So, so this, this app that I've been demoing, so it's, it's not a website, it's a, I need another drink. Yeah, so it's, it's true, if, if, you're, if you're accessing the platform via an intermediary, like a website, then yeah, that website can uh, decide what you see. They can have pressure put on them by, uh, you know, by, by greater powers. Um, but if you're using this uh, this desktop application or even a mobile application that's using the light client functionality, then uh, you know, then it it really is decentralized. There's uh, um, you know, there's no one. Uh, it's it would be very difficult. For someone to actually prevent you from uh, from viewing certain content. So in a way, I can assume that the front end is decentralized. I, do I understand well? Yeah, yeah. This this app that I've been showing you. So it uh, it connects to the system via the blockchain and via IPFS. But there's no server. There's no back end whatsoever. Uh, the only time you access the back end is when you download the application in the first place. Wonderful. Thank you for your time. I think we got another question over here, right, Chris? Yep. Hi. Um, I was going to ask if you could elaborate on how the creator token is Sybil resistant. Yeah, so um, the problem, of course, is with uh, you know anything like followers or likes or views. Uh, it's totally unreliable because it's very easy to write a bot uh, that can uh, you know just you know populate the database with fake data. And it would be very easy to write a, a naive smart contract that counts how many uh, times it's been liked. But then you, you can always write a, uh, you know, a, a script or a bot that will just like a piece of content you know, 10 million times. So you can't trust that. Um, so if, uh, with, with one of these creator tokens, um, if the creator is getting paid, uh, you know, ten, let's say 1,000 tokens a day, and then the value of this token is actually uh, determined on the free market. Then you're actually you get to find out uh, how much how much money the the creator is getting paid uh, every day. Of course, there's many factors in this. So uh, it depends how fast the the creator is actually selling their own token. So that's going to have a, an effect on the value. But it's, uh, it's a much better metric than market cap, which is, market cap is a terrible metric. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you can, uh, um, you know, you can skew the data very easily with market cap. But I think this is a, I, I think this is a, a better, a better means of creating a, a civil resistant measure of popularity. What do you think? Well, I was wondering what's to prevent the creator from selling tokens to himself at a very high value and then like liking his own content to make it appear to be really popular. Um, yeah, that, that might be, uh, that might be a, a valid vulnerability. Um, originally, I was thinking that um, you, know, you could gamify donations and then uh, the risk then, of course, is that uh, you can have circular donations where the same money keeps getting spent in a circle and uh, actually, um, you know, just in, inflates the, the the you know the number of of tokens that are issued. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's an interesting point. I want to think about that some more. Thanks. Okay, so this part.
part of it I don't quite understand. As I understand it, if I want to uh, look for images of caves, unless you're a part of my trusted network or the trusted network of people that I know, I can't access that image that you posted. So how do you, if you're trying to financialize uh, your images, how do you build volume on that image? Yeah, so on, you know, with, with Google, for example, uh, you can just get access to the content straight away. And, you know, viewing the content through a trust network, it does create an additional barrier. Um, you know, so may maybe if, uh, if you use a search engine and you can find content on the mixed network, but then you're not able to view it, unless maybe you can, like, temporarily uh, preview, uh, you know, if, if, um, if the person isn't in your, in your trust network. But uh, I, I think it's, it's the way it has to be on a decentralized system. So... Uh, at some point, you have to somehow decide that you trust them or uh, you trust them through some kind of intermediary before, before you can look at the content. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's just it's, it's a property of a, of a system like this. It, it'll be very different to, to the web that, that people are used to, for sure. Do, do you suspect that would be problematic in any way? Um, you know, every every platform has its own pros and cons. Um, you know, so for people who are really feeling the pain of censorship, and typically, they they just want to talk within their own community anyway, then they might find a lot of value in this. Uh, but on the other hand, if uh, if you're just doing a very broad search, uh, you know, if you're doing research and you just want to look at a lot of different information. Uh, then it might be a barrier because suddenly you have to keep like trusting lots of people. Right, so it may not be the best fit for that. But I can't imagine, uh, like, I don't know, have you reached out to someone like Sam Harris? I mean, or someone of this nature? They, like, and I can imagine the way that you've kind of set things up, like s certain people would be really keen to be seen as Sam Harris's biggest fan, let's say and that sort of thing. And they're obviously looking for alternatives, uh, people on the intellectual dark web, let's say. Um, is, is that who you're gearing towards in some sense? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not gearing towards any, uh, any specific demographic. Um, obviously, some, some people are feeling the pain more than others. And in, uh, a, you know, I, in, in, my, in my viewpoint, the the people that are feeling the pain from censorship are probably uh, people we might want to uh, listen to a little bit more. Uh, but you know, the whole question of who uh, who we listen to is that's uh, yeah, that's 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 a huge a huge topic. Uh, but I, I you know I'm I'm a I'm a freedom of speech maximalist. I think uh, I, I think if we want to solve the world's problems, then we need to be able to to, to communicate freely. In full agreement there. So here's another one. Hi. Um, just regarding the visibility of stuff, I, I think that each user ought to be able to decide how they want to see things. For example, they might set a default where they see everything right away, and then they can block it later. It should be up to the user, I think, to maximize emergence. Um, and if someone wants to be super private, that, that's up to them, too. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. So um, it is, uh, you know, I, I don't control the platform in any way. So it should be an option in the app, but also um, anyone can innovate and create another system, another smart contract that uh, has a different system for how you decide what, what, what you can see. Um, right. So I, I suspect a lot of people would look at my, my trusted account system and think they can do something better. And, and then maybe it can even be a, a plugin architecture in the app, so you can uh, you can download a plugin where you've got a different system for for the filter bubble. Right. I, I just like the idea of maximizing discovery. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry I wasn't here for the whole talk, so I might be covering something that was already covered. But you said that every creator would get their own token. And then how are people going to buy those tokens? Uh, is there going to be 
I mean, people are paying millions of dollars to just get their token on an exchange, so obviously it's not going to be through all the regular exchanges. Uh, you're not going to flood the exchanges with 2 million new tokens um, or 2 million types of tokens. And then what about the regulatory issues uh, with something like the SEC? I, I wanted to make a token last year, and my attorney said, don't you dare. I mean, I just wanted to make a token to give away to people for fun. Uh, they didn't like it because of the legal fees involved. So I'm very curious how you're going to get away with that, at least in the U.S. Um, well, I, I think everything should have a, a token of, 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 some, of, 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 of some method. Um, but there's, there's a lot of different ways a token can be, can, can be designed. Um, but I've, I have a lot of confidence in, in decentralized exchanges, especially for, you know, for these, these on-chain tokens. Um, so if... Uh, Didn't Ether Delta just get... Did it get shut down by the SEC? I'm not sure exactly. Well, if, if, it, if it's happened. a decentralized exchange, if it's a true decentralized exchange, then it's, it can't be shut down. That's what you would think. And then yeah. Helion wants to make a truly so, decentralized exchange, but then they took it all down and they decided that they're going to do all the KYC AML because they got scared of uh, the SEC also. So I'm wondering, you know, how that's really going to play out if the... There's going to be a lot of improvements with decentralized exchanges over the next few years. So okay. um, I, it's, uh, trading will be unstoppable. Um, and of course, maybe there will be uh, le legal pressures, but uh, uh, I think there'll be no technical barriers. You'll always be able to, to trade any token. Okay, so just in today's world, uh, if I was a content creator right now and I got the Dave token or something, on my account, how how are people going to buy my Dave token right uh, now? Well, so we, we already have various ERC20 token exchanges on Ethereum. Uh, so it would actually be very similar technology on, on this blockchain. Um, so I, I think it would actually, it would be quite easy to have that, uh, the similar ERC20 exchanges running on, on mixed blockchain. Yeah, I think, I think it's definitely safe to say that there's going to be all kinds of different ways for people to access tokens beyond just the centralized exchanges in the coming years. That's going to be hyper necessary anyway. Uh, they've been acting as kind of a gatekeeper, and uh, I think those days are going to be over soon. Uh, do we have more questions? Yeah. I'm sorry for taking more of your time, and I hope you don't mind. I, I'd rather like to stand, actually. Uh, so uh, you have definitely slightly different... Um, more professional point of view, like I am just a content creator and a social media marketer. So I would like to uh, share with you the way I see things a little bit. So you could uh, partly maybe recognize concerns of a person who would be a con con content creator. So just like uh, those two gentlemen mentioned before. Uh, just a second. Uh, fuck. Fuck, I'm sorry. Uh, just fell out. Did it happen to you guys that sometimes you talk and it fell out of uh, get away? Uh, okay, we were talking about the uh, about the f fact how the content creator can find uh, another person out there. Be because, like, let's face it, uh, if I'm not a celebrity, I'm just a regular a bloke who likes to uh, share his knowledge about blockchain technology. Uh, I've got like 20 friends on Twitter, 20 friends on Facebook. I'll bring some of them to your platform. How am I gonna ever build any follower base if uh, people cannot see my content, uh, if they do not uh, really accept me in the first place? Uh, naturally, it's gonna slow me down, so you would have to figure out the ways to help content creators. Because uh, the, the reality is that if uh, I cannot uh, get any exposure, I will leave the platform. That's, that's why we're all there in the first place. Um, I mean, you... I mean, I, I don't expect uh, any answer now. Just wanted to point out that like, uh, content creators will need to get some tools or some ideas of uh, reaching out to other people. Uh, Steemit is already a difficult place to really build a follower base. From what I heard here, I think it would be even harder. So. Just something to think about. You want another beer while you're waiting? Another beer? Yeah. Yeah.
Um, so I, I guess I've, I've got two things to say. Um, on one hand, I'm under no illusions that uh, people trying to gain traction on this platform might have problems because it is less accessible, especially at the moment. You know, to begin with, it'll just be in this desktop app that you have to download. Uh, you can't just click on a web link, so that, that's a major barrier. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, every developer who uses Twitter and Facebook and Reddit, they find it very frustrating because they want to innovate and they can't. And so with a platform like this, uh, there's massive potential for, develop for a whole developer community to, uh, to, to evolve because suddenly the developers can do what they want to do. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not like when you, you create a, a new Web 2.0 web, web startup and you release your, your uh, iOS app and then everybody can use it. Uh, you know, the, the barriers are much greater. Uh, but the rewards are also much greater as well, I think. I, I'm wondering if you've seen ZeroNet Project and if you have any comparative thoughts. Um, I haven't looked at that in detail. Is, is that an, another decentralized publication system? Yeah, it's very similar. Um, the main difference is that it doesn't use a blockchain. It just uses BitTorrent. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that, if you'd used it, but like mainly if you had any thoughts on why using a blockchain is better and what advantages that gives. Yeah, I mean, th there's been a lot of different uh, decentralized web technologies have been coming out in the past few years. And they, every, every one of them does something a little bit different. Uh, the whole idea with this is that the core functionality is implemented in smart contracts. So that means the, the, the whole state of the system you know, can be queried. Uh, and, and that's extremely useful. Uh, but there are many other, uh, many other models for doing this that uh, will have their own pros and cons. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of happy with what I'm doing, but I'm sure you know, many other systems will be good as well. Yeah, it definitely seems more extensible and flexible, what you're doing. Yeah, but, but also, you got to pay for every transaction, you know? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Going back to the trusted network uh, question, so the way I understand it, two people could begin a network of illegal content uh, are you concerned about that at all? Um, you know, I, I'm concerned by uh, people violating the rights of others all over the world in every context. Uh, so my, my world view is that uh, we need freedom of communication so that we can understand what's really going on in the world to uh, uh, expose the, the corruption and, uh, you know, to stop the violence, stop, uh, stop people violating other people's rights. Uh, but of, of course, uh, yeah, with, with every platform, people will use it for, uh, uh, for good and bad. You know, that's, uh, that's just the reality. Uh, by illegal content, I guess that's referring to people colluding to maybe conduct a terrorist attack or something of that nature, sorry? Child pornography, uh, fair enough. Do we have additional questions? Okay, great. Um, thank you, Jonathan. I just am um, curious um, uh, to how to help. Uh, so uh, what do you see um, as a like future of Acuity, how can I say? Yeah, acuity. And then uh, where do you see the most uh, uh, traction will actually arise? Which reasons or? Uh, well, to begin with, I suspect that people actually, uh, you know, at the moment we've got a Discord forum where everyone's talking about mix. So I suspect the first people uh, would be people that want to talk about mix and acuity. They'll do it on, on the platform itself. Uh, and then I would hope it would spread to uh, you know people talking about other blockchain technologies. 
Um, of course, uh, in reality, it might uh, just get popular with lots of uh, flat earthers and uh, alt right, you know. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's uh, yeah, that's that's just inevitable, I think. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll ask you more details later. Okay, yeah. cool. Maybe you can encourage some of the, that. Actually, I mean. I, I think that that side of the political spectrum is lacking voice to some extent anyway. Well, I've, uh, you know, it, it's a neutral platform. So I actually, I have no means to affect uh, content whatsoever. You know, that's, that's the whole idea. You do have a Twitter account, I assume. Yeah, yeah, no. but um, I, I, I don't want to be... Uh, Influencing I, I, that. Yeah, I don't want to influence what people use it for. I think that's smart. But yeah, I mean, I'll have to think about that once people start using it. Do I want to start telling the world on Twitter like people are using this platform to talk about this topic? When, when I said about illegal content, do you think it's more along the lines of George Floyd? Um, so I, I guess, uh, it, you know, I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an adherent to the non-aggression principle, so if, uh, if someone's not vi uh, violating my rights and not violating the rights of others, it's none of my business. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, you know, if, if people want to, uh, to trade between each other and they're not harming anybody, then it's, it's got nothing to do with me. So... And what it really comes down to is, can a government twist your arm to put back doors into this decentralized system? Because that's exactly what they would like to have, and maybe they'll try to stop you. If, so how are you going to be humble from that? That's really the biggest threat, I feel. It's, it's, it's all on GitHub. Uh, so if, uh, if I'm putting in a back door, then uh, you're going to see it on GitHub. Uh, so I, I think... Uh, yeah, no matter how much, I mean, okay, maybe they, they make me do it, but uh, then, you know, that's like a big story. You know, people would see it and then uh, people wouldn't use it. And, you know, what they did to Kim.com compared to what they did to Google. I mean, Google has plenty of content on it that, you know, any government could say they should arrest everyone at Google right now because of all sorts of content, but, the, but that's Google, so... They're not, but Kim.com, they could go after him, even though he was really nothing more than doing what some of the things that Google is doing. So it's true. It, I guess it's uh, just that's how capricious and arbitrary. Well, th this is why we is. need a, a decentralized system. Um, you know, right, no, no one blames Tim Berners-Lee when someone commits a crime using the World Wide Web because it's a decentralized technology. But once, once it is a centralized technology, because the people running that technology, have an authority over it, then they, it actually means they're responsible for what happens on the platform. Right, so the question is really, how do you make it so that the government sees you more as a Google and less as a Kim.com? You know, as you merrily go along your way, creating something that they feel is enabling criminals, you know, maybe they would also like to ban roads uh, while well, they're at it. Mm -hmm. um, I think if if we're if people are using the platform to expose corruption, then uh, that uh, that benefits certain power bases and is uh, a bad thing for for other power bases. So uh, even uh, you know even powerful people might like this. Do do you feel any concern for your own? Were this to gain traction, would you be concerned for your own well-being? Um, I'm 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 happy to to uh, I'm, I'm happy to go down this road and and see what happens. So it's me again. Uh, this time I'm not gonna forget my question. I wrote it down. Uh, you mentioned I mean you didn't mention, but it wrote down on one of your slides uh, about anti-spam uh, strategy, and I would like to hear more about it if you don't mind. Yeah. So. Of course, the risk is uh, someone you trust might publish a 100 terabyte file, and then uh, you know your device is going to start downloading it. 
So, uh, okay, maybe if you trust them, they shouldn't do that, but it might happen anyway. So th there's various ways uh, you can eliminate this problem. So you can, uh, you can have a system where you have to burn some, uh, some of the mixed cryptocurrency, and then you just uh, you, you, you take the, the size of the mix that was burned, and then you divide it by the file size, and then you know how much was burned per byte. Uh, and then on the client software, you can just set a limit saying, uh, every file has to have, have burned this much mix per byte. And that's a very simple uh, anti-spam mechanism. OK, I'm glad to hear that you're addressing this concern. Uh, just one more question for tonight. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your roadmap? So when will this be accessible for the test phase or for just regular consumers as I could be? Well, Thank you. I mean, the, the most important thing that needs to happen is for me to release the app so people can install it on, on Windows and Mac and they can start, uh, start participating. Um, uh, one of the major problems I had this year was uh, whenever uh, Ethereum Classic had the 51% attack and then suddenly I really had to, to focus on, uh, on how I can deal with that problem. Uh, so I've, I've put in the f a first layer of protection, and I will need to hire people to put in more layers of protection to, to make it more secure. So that was kind of a, a setback time-wise. And in terms of developing the app, it kind of it really has to be me because this is kind of like the, the reference implementation. So uh, you know many other things I've been able to hire other people to do. And once we have the reference implementation, then. I can hire people to build stuff on top of that, but just kind of putting together the, the, the core application, it kind of needs to be me that, that builds it. So I'm kind of the, the, the bottleneck. Uh, but it's, it's getting there, and I'm using some great open source tools that are really making it easy with uh, Electron and Vue and uh, all, all these amazing uh, open source libraries. Uh, well, you know, I I showed you the app, and it just needs to be polished. And we need a all, date. I, I don't know the date. Um, I don't know the date. Um, <laughs> I I would say definitely within three months, hopefully less. I I just I need to lock myself away and work on it. <laughs> Um, hello, yeah. Um, Jonathan, I have uh, one issue that actually I've been dealing with for about th four months now. I'm on Steam, and I've been on Steam for about a year and a half, posting regularly. Um, for the past three or four months, I, uh, three or four months ago, I lost my posting ability through Chrome and Safari. I used to use Chrome all the time. Um, Coincidentally, it happened about hours after I uploaded a do, uh, video to, to DTube about a man named Bill Browder, who is a rather notorious figure. He was a hedge, hedge fund manager in Russia. He was charged with tax evasion, made shitloads of money. Charged with tax evasion, he actually is controlling the narrative now, and he's accusing Russians of being bad people and coming after him and all this. It's a very shady um, affair. I also wrote a blog post about it. The thing is, um, after I lost my posting function on Chrome and Safari, that was like within hours, I have not been able to do post through them. Fortunately, I can do it through Firefox. Um, would this be immune to that kind of control, because you say this is a browser, right? The app is a browser, essentially, right? And the thing is, I, I'm sure Steam it didn't censor me. It's Chrome and Safari. Right? Censoring us right now. That's all. Um, I mean, I, I would be surprised if uh, like Google was uh, censoring you through your web browser. Um, I don't know. Sorry. Um, I have no idea about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just a content creator. A friend of mine, when I told him, he said, Google and Apple. 
I'm I mean, not sure. I, I did, uh, I, I saw a, a git commit for Steemit uh, a few weeks ago, and there is actually a blacklist of accounts on Steemit uh, for, the, for the, web the, the web interface that everybody uses. Um, but yeah, with, with this platform, um, there's, there's no intermediary, so you, you can always publish. There's no, no one can stop you, it'll be very difficult. Thanks, thanks. How are we doing? Any, any more questions this evening? Okay. Um, is there anything stopping this from being deployed to a, another blockchain? Like if a, Ethereum got super scalable one day, it could be deployed there as well? Uh, well, the, 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 main, the main smart contracts are written in Solidity. Um, so uh, there's certainly, you, you could deploy the same system to other blockchains that are compatible. Um, Personally, like long term, I would be uh, I'd be very interested in maybe migrating the platform to to Polkadot actually, um, uh, but this yeah for for the time being, uh, Ethereum is a great platform and having uh, having an independent blockchain it's uh, in some ways it's great but then the the security issue with the fifty one percent attack is uh, is uh, is kind of irritating. Thanks. So we've had just a tremendous string of questions this, this evening, really fantastic questions. Any more? I think that's a good place to stop, yeah? Um, before, uh, actually before I say anything else, can we just give a round of applause, please, to Jonathan? It's a terrific honor to have you. It was a fantastic presentation. I think we learned a lot. Obviously, there was a lot of questions for good reason. Uh, so thank you. Um, for those of you that are still here, still with us, um, there is some swag here. And um, maybe to your surprise, as much as it was uh, uh, mine, Jonathan's actually Irish or Northern, uh, from Northern Ireland. I, I was convinced he was Canadian or American. Yeah, it's, 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 it's true. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm not surprised that an Irishman would choose a beer coaster for his swag. Uh, great choice there, so be sure to grab a card and a sticker and a, a beer coaster. And um, yeah, just uh, much appreciated. Uh, we've had such a tremendous run of great content every single week. Uh, this is another great addition. 